Hello, Dom. Hello, friend. Here I am with this old device about which I have comment on your YouTube channel. Now I have to pause a little bit time to speak to my Spanish speaking subscribers and explain them a little the meaning of this video. And uh, in a few moments, I will be back with you speaking in English again. Hola a todos, amigos de YouTube. Este vídeo será íntegramente hablado en inglés para poder consultar a mi amigo Don de los Estados Unidos una cuestión sobre un dispositivo que amablemente me han regalado un suscriptor porque no sabe lo que es ni para lo que sirve y me ha pedido que lo investigue y precisamente de esta investigación es de lo que se trata en este vídeo. Así que el que quiera saber de lo que hablo con Don y no entienda mucho de inglés en la parte inferior de este vídeo puede entrar en las traducciones automáticas de subtítulos, seleccionar la opción de español e ir leyendo en español lo que se va a hablar en inglés. I am here with you again, Don. This is the device. Manufacturer was Radiant Corporation in Cleveland, 13, Ohio, under license from Cornell Duvillier Electric Corporation from New Jersey. Here you can see its old bicolet casing, and you can see on the front it has two knobs, the lower one, which is a four position switch, and the upper one, which is a rotary knob, and which operates the ferrite bars inside the inductance to constitute the variable magnetic permeability tuner. At the top, uh, we can see part of the small power supply. This is the transformer and the electrolytic capacitor and the variable magnetic permeability tuner, the CJ6 uh, valve, and a dial illuminating lamp. Uh, on the back, we can see two 110 alternating current voltage connectors, one here and the other uh, here. Um, and, and, and the other is an output after the switch of the switch that you, can, you have seen before. You can also see five terminals um, in which the control unit is ground, and this is the, the ground, and it's connected to the metal chassis, and the two on the left and the two on the right seems to be an antenna signal input and amplified RF output for the receiver. So far away normal in the absence of having time to do reverse engineering to it and draw the entire internal diagram of this device. At the bottom of this device, oh sorry, uh, we can see selenium plate rectifier uh, here, here in this in this place, and also uh, the double biscuit commutator with switch. This is the switch for the AC current. Hmm? Uh, the rotary commutator, as I said, has only four positions. The first is the off position, the second is the on position, and there are two more positions left, which I can assume from what I have observed so far, we switches to RF signals recession bands, surely from the UV shape band. As I said before, there is a 300 uh, ohms impedance ribbon cable that carries the signal to the front commutator and two capacitors here here, two capacitors, that carry the signal on the second biscuit to the, the other two pair of uh, connectors. Um, my problem that I cannot solve and of which I don't see any clarity is the frequency or channel dial or whatever it represents. I am going to put it again in position. Okay. As you can see, the knob has two arrows, one here and one here, in opposite sides. Uh, then it seems that we have a double dial, one dial and the other dial, double dial, with the numbers uh, 2, 4, 6 and the numbers 7, 10, 13. Here we, got, here we have two, we passing through three, we get four, we pass about five, and we get six. Then it's similar. We have seven, 
we pass through 8 and 9, we get 10. We pass through 11 and 12, and we get 13. However, it must be observed that if we apply the logic that when we increase the number of uh, counterclockwise direction, we increase the frequency between 2, 4, and 6. Hmm? From here, from here, sorry, from here to here, uh, we increase 2, 4, 6, and the logic is we increase the frequency from here to here. But in the other side, it seems not to, to occur the same. When, when we get to here, we have the highest uh, frequency or channel here, 13. And when we go here, the uh, upring, upring on the increasing, increasing the, sig the frequency signal, here we are lowering from 13 to 10 to 7. I have the intuition that these are not frequencies but TV channels, but I have not been able to find information about this device on the internet. More than the manufacturer was North American. And this is the reason for consulting you, friend. I would like to know if you can find out and give me some technical information that you can find from the United States about the numbers on dial and if somebody knows this model of devices. Thanks very much for your attention. And when you have an answer or more, if it is possible, you can write it here in comments of this video. If anyone knows any technical information about this device, can also expose it in comments. Have a nice day, Don, and thank you very much to everybody. Muchas gracias a todos también, amigos. Y si os ha gustado el vídeo, pues le dais a un me gusta. Y bueno, pues cuando sepa más cosas sobre este aparato, ya haré otro vídeo para que veamos la segunda parte. Esto solamente ha sido la parte de investigación de qué es esto. Y en el próximo vídeo veremos ya más y si funciona o no funciona, si está averiado o si hay que repararlo, qué hay que reparar y todas las cosas esas que tanto nos gustan. Así que bueno, pues hasta el próximo vídeo amigos y adiós a todos. Un cordial saludo.